Hi everyone and welcome to Draytech Australia and New Zealand. My name is Darren and I'd like to introduce you to Draytech's Vega 2862 series routers. The Draytech 2862 series has been developed with a small to medium business in mind, supporting up to 50,000 NAT sessions, IPv4 and IPv6, 16 VLANs which can be used to segregate parts of your network for internal security or for traffic control, and also bandwidth limiting and QoS to prioritise more important traffic over others. There's also 32 VPN tunnels with load balance and redundancy, and 16 SSL VPN tunnels. Four models are available with non-Wi-Fi, 11N and 11AC Wi-Fi versions, and a Wi-Fi with VoIP model. The base Vega 2862 model has no Wi-Fi. The Vega 2862N has 2.4 GHz 802.11N Wi-Fi. The Vega 2862AC model has dual band 802.11AC Wi-Fi. That's the AC2000 version which supports up to 300 megabits per second on 2.4 GHz and 1700 megabits per second on the 5 GHz band. It also features Wave 2 technology which can handle multiple simultaneous Wi-Fi streams. And the Vega 2862VAC which is the same as the 2862AC but adds VoIP. In common, they all have a built-in VDSL2 or ADSL2 2 Plus modem to work with fibre to the node NBN connections or any type of ADSL in Australia. They also have a gigabit WAN port, which can be used to connect to any type of internet connection that requires an Ethernet WAN port, like cable internet, NBN hybrid fibre, fibre to the premises and fibre to the curb, and wireless and satellite internet connections. In addition, they have two USB ports, which can be used to connect a supported 3G or 4G USB modem. I'll include a link to the supported dongle list in the description below. There's also a list included in the router's GUI, which I'll get to shortly. Alternatively, the USB ports can be used to connect to most standard USB printers or flash drives or USB hard drives. All of the WAN interfaces, that is the ADSL VDSL2 port, the Gigabit Ethernet WAN port and the USB ports can be configured to operate in either low balance mode to share the available bandwidth evenly amongst the users on the LAN or in failover mode which will trigger the secondary connections if the primary one drops out or if there's heavy load on the primary connection for example. Also in common they have four Gigabit Ethernet LAN ports and an on off switch on the back. In the box they have a product registration card a quick start guide, ethernet and phone cables, and manning screws if you want to mount it on the wall. There's also slots on the bottom of the router to allow that to happen. And there's also an optional rack mount bracket available for easy and neat installation into a standard 19 inch rack or cabinet. Inside they have a stateful packet inspection firewall and flexible object based filtering rules. If you'd like to block certain types of internet content, they have keywords, service type and file extension blocking, plus an optional web content filtering subscription service. All are also supported by the Draytech Vega ACS2 central management application, which allows remote service provisioning, configuration backups and firmware upgrades. They also work with the free Draytech smart monitor to record and report network traffic and activity. On the VoIP model, we have an FXS port which can be expanded to two FXS ports with the addition of the included double adapter. This allows you to plug in two analog telephone handsets or you could connect them to an analog PBX system. It also has an FXO port, which you can plug into a landline for failover if the internet goes down or to route calls like triple O if your VoIP service provider doesn't support triple O calls. Don't forget to connect the antennas on the Wi-Fi models. They're detachable and they don't come fitted to reduce the chance of damage during shipping. Detachable antennas also means you can fit bigger antennas if you're looking to squeeze out a bit of extra range. They use a standard SMA connector and the standard dual band antennas are around 2.5 dBi at 2.4 GHz and 5 dBi at 5 GHz. Draytech have the Ant 1207 antenna available as a straight screw on upgrade. It takes things up a notch to 5 dBi at 2.4 GHz and 7 dBi at 5 GHz, and it's available in either black or white. 
There's also the Ant 2520 dual band indoor directional patch antenna, which has 7.5 dBi at 2.4 GHz and 10 dBi at 5 GHz. I'll include links to those below if you'd like further information. Okay, let's plug it in and have a quick look inside. Bear in mind this is the 2862 VAC model which has dual band Wi-Fi and VoIP. The other models are very much the same though and only vary in the Wi-Fi and VoIP settings that you'll see. Okay, the web interface comes up on IP address 192.168.1.1 and the default username and password are both admin. That's explained in the quick start guide. Okay, once we're in, we'll get this little warning about it being set to the default password. Uh, it's always advisable to change that to keep people out that you don't want in. And then we're into our dashboard page. You can see here I'm connected to port four and this will show us the status of any connected WANs as well as our wireless and so on. Up the top here, we've got some shortcuts. The little home button here will take us to draytech.com. That's a handy way to check if you're online. And we've got our GUI map. That just gives us a layout of everything in the menus on the left hand side here. And we've got our web console. We can save the configuration to a backup file and log out. It'll also log us out automatically. We can set that anything up to 10 minutes. Okay, and our uh, online status will tell us the details of any connected WANs. If we're connected to ADSL or VDSL down the bottom here, we'll also see signal to noise ratio. Down under WAN general setup this is where we set up our load balance or failover. So that can be always on or failover and our load balance simply click there. Failover gives us all our failover options internet access we can get out of the, into the details of each WAN, a WAN budget, LAN details, that's our DHCP server, VLANs, bind IP to MAC if you need to reserve IP addresses on your LAN, a web porthole, routing, NAT is where we set up our port redirection and DMZ host and so on, ALG if we need to disable ALG for SIP pass through, hardware acceleration, our firewall rules, user management rules, our object settings to create our objects for our firewall rules, content security management, bandwidth management, it's our QoS settings, applications, here's a dynamic DNS client amongst other things, VPN and remote access setup, certificate setup, VoIP rules, general settings, there's our wireless LAN settings for 2.4 GHz and we get the same deal under 5 GHz. There's our SSL VPN setup. USB application. Down here we can see our supported modems list. System maintenance. We've got our TR069 settings for the ACS2 management. And under diagnostics we've got some things we can do there to check our connections. Under central management, we can centrally manage VPNs, wireless access points, and Draytech switches. And that's about it. I'll include a link below to a test drive of these configuration menus so you can test all this out for yourself in more detail. So that is Draytech's Vigor 2862 series router range. They come with a two-year back-to-base warranty and are available now from Draytech resellers. For more information about all Draytech products, please check out our website at www.draytech.com.au. If you have any questions, please comment below, or you can send us an email to sales at draytech.com.au or give us a call on 02983888899. Once again, I'll include links below to a test drive of the configuration menus, as well as the hardware and software options available. If you like this video, please give the like button a click to keep up to date with the latest videos from Draytech Australia and New Zealand. Please subscribe and give the bell below a click too. Thanks and bye for now.